and welcome to space here from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. The ExoMars spacecraft has just blasted off from the launch pad behind me on its way to the Red Planet to go and search for signs of life. It's an incredible scientific and engineering challenge and we're with the people who are making it happen this year in our special series, Destination Mars. This is where the ExoMars adventure begins. Baikonur on the Kazakh steppe. The spot where Gagarin first launched to space and Russia's great history of spaceflight looms large. Gathering at the viewing platform three kilometers from the launch pad are scientists and engineers from Europe and Russia. Soon the precious scientific instruments they've worked for years to develop and build will be blasted towards Mars. If my instrument is shaken, it will be tormented. And our instrument really doesn't like that kind of thing. But we hope that it will survive. For about the past 40 minutes, I'm starting to get a bit of a cribble. You know, I'm starting to feel a little bit, uh, a bit edgy. You know, you think of all the people that are putting so much work into it, and you see the people that are here, and then the people that are that are back home who've put a huge amount of effort into trying to get this thing onto the pad, and uh, and uh, it's going to be it's now what five minutes to launch? Yeah, it's uh, getting a bit nervous. The rocket safely skyward, the relief is clear. Fantastic, we're on the road to Mars. It's been really amazing. The rocket may have left Earth safely, but there's still a lot to do. A few hours later at the Mission Control Center in Moscow and there are tense faces again as ExoMars prepares for a tricky maneuver in space. The rocket has to fire its engines four times, then separate from the spacecraft. It's a controlled explosion, you know, that you're, that you are, uh, that you're, you're executing to some extent. But um, there's, there's always an element of risk behind it. The separation goes to plan. Now ESA has to check that everything is working. We run all the space spacecraft tests to make sure that we have the spacecraft fully under control. And then the weeks after, we would start testing one after the other, the instruments, uh, all, all functions of the spacecraft, the big antenna to, to communicate to Earth. Everything that can be tested will be done during that phase. And then it just drifts away up to the point that we do the final correction and inject to Mars. This is the first of two ExoMars missions, and it's dedicated to studying the atmosphere, sniffing out methane and sending a small test probe down to the surface. Mars experts across Europe and Russia are watching closely, including here at the University of Lyon in France. One of the big mysteries they want to solve is the presence of methane, which has been found in small quantities on Mars. The gas we're interested in the most is methane, because methane is not stable in the Martian atmosphere. What is stable in the atmosphere of Mars is carbon dioxide. If methane is released into the atmosphere, we know that in a couple of hundred years it will be transformed into carbon dioxide. So, if there is any, it means that it's been emitted now by the planet. The scientists will be tracking where methane is emitted on Mars and comparing it with new images that ExoMars will generate. Mars. 
I study the surface of Mars. The main instrument that interests me is the camera Cassis, which was made in Bern. This camera allows us to have color images of Mars at a resolution we don't have today, and above all to have the topography, the hills, systematically and in high resolution. Those images will also feed into the ongoing debate over the presence of salty water at certain times and certain places on Mars. We haven't really found liquid water on Mars. We found traces of salts which were deposited by liquid water. But we're not talking about cooking salt here. It's more like a salt, like the salt you'd put in water to make bleach. So it's not something that's very favorable for life. When ExoMars reaches the Red Planet in October, it will split up, the main spacecraft staying in orbit, while its small lander, called Schiaparelli, will head for the Martian surface. It's a surface that may look like Baikonur, but is very different, far colder and drier. Exactly how different will be explored by Schiaparelli. The opportunity to have a probe going down through the atmosphere allows us to have local measurements of the atmospheric conditions, and this allows us to understand how the climate of Mars functions. Meanwhile, high up in orbit, the spectrometers on ExoMars, one of them developed by Oleg Koroblev, will take fine measurements of the Martian air. Our instrument is devoted to the measurement of trace gases by measuring the solar radiation passing through the atmosphere of the Red Planet. All these different measurements will feed into the core scientific questions. Is there life on Mars now? Was there life on Mars in the past? You could think it's a dead planet, but in fact things happen, and especially there are changes that involve water, which is the first ingredient of life. It doesn't look habitable, but that doesn't mean it isn't inhabited. If methane is there in abundance and you see it locally, it doesn't have to be biology. Uh, and it's important to recognize here that I'm a little bit of a skeptic. You know, I don't, uh, I, I don't go for this life business. Um, I try to keep the other guys honest. That's all for now from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, but you can watch other episodes of Destination Mars on our website and keep up to date with space news. Next month, we'll be looking at how satellite technology is transforming search and rescue. See you then.